Hi everybody, welcome back. We are looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 12 at the start of the third declension. There are two chapters on this and so we're going to get started on it right away. Now, as usual, you turn over a new chapter in Duff's book and your heart sinks momentarily because you think, oh, a ton of new things to learn. Of course there are a bunch of new things to learn, but there are some important features of this. There are two chapters devoted to the third declension, not particularly because it's hard, but just because there are a lot of variations within it. But the variations have a kind of logic to them. Uh, this is two thirds of the way through the book, not because it's that point in how difficult it is, but just because it needs to come here logically in the sequence of the stuff that you're learning. Really, once we get over a couple of conceptual barriers, I promise you, it's not that difficult. And moreover, the third declension is actually the key to opening the way to progress in Greek, especially with understanding participles from chapter 14 onwards, and they're crucially important. So this is really worth persevering through. There is some new stuff to learn. You're expecting that, but it's not that difficult. I'll show you some ticks and tips and tricks to get the hang of it and some patterns which will help you to understand it. And once you've nailed it, we really will be ready to make progress into the next stage of your Greek learning. And you'll be really on the way to completing this course. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Here is the um, uh, full declension of the Greek word aster, meaning a star. Aster, astera, asteros, asteri, asteris, asteras, asteron, aster sin. Notice a few things to start with. First, I've highlighted the endings in red. These are the endings you've got to learn. Um, come to the nominative in a second. A os i, es as own sin. Aster, astera, asteros, asteri, asteres, asteras, asteron, aster sin. They are the endings for the masculine third declension noun, which has a consonant at the end of the stem. We'll come to some others with uh, vowels at the end of the stem shortly. But for nouns like this, these are the ones you've got to learn. And they're very, very common. And you find these endings, as I said, scattered elsewhere. Uh, notice a few things that will help you to remember that. This is familiar. Genitive plural. Um, notice a couple of things to watch out for, though. Um, these endings. A, os, as. Do occur elsewhere in first and second declension nouns in, for example... That occurs in logos, that occurs in neuter nouns in the plural, as ends in, uh, ending occurs in some feminine nouns. So just got to watch out for that. But if you learn it like this, we'll come to those problems a little bit later on. So that's the first thing. Here's the second bit of good news. Did I mention this already? The endings in the masculine and the feminine nouns are the same. So once you've learned this, which is a masculine noun, you've also learned the endings for the feminine noun. That's great news because it just slashes by one third immediately the stuff that you need to learn. And that is the case for all third declension nouns. Every single third declension noun has the same endings in the masculine and feminine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So that's something else which is good news. OK, now what that does mean is that when you're learning a uh, third declension noun, there's nothing in the word itself which tells you what gender it is. And so conventionally, in lexicons, the article will be included along with the noun to tell you what gender it is. And I encourage you very, very strongly, when you're learning it, don't just learn aster or astera or whatever, come to that in a second, but learn it with the article. Because otherwise you won't know what gender it is and you'll get in a bit of a tangle. Which brings us to the thing that you're all puzzling about, you're all wondering about, what the heck is going on? Up here. Why is aster in green? And the answer is, of course, as you've all spotted, that eta. The general principle of third declension nouns is that the nominative singular form does not generally include the stem of the noun. The nominative singular could be anything at all. You do singular, plural, nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, as you're expecting. This is the nominative singular. And so I've done it in green, highlighted it for you. And this is the crucial, strange thing about third declension nouns. When you learn a third declension noun, you actually have to learn two words. You have to learn 
a word which will tell you what the stem is? Well, conventionally, we learn the genitive singular because that gives you the stem. You could have picked any others, but grammarians choose the genitive singular, so let's do what everybody else does. So you have to learn, if you want to learn this noun, you have to learn asteros. That gives you the stem. And separately, you have to learn the nominative form. Because just learning the stem won't give you the nominative. So in fact, when you learn a third declension noun, or when you see one listed in a lexicon, you do not just see the, Latin, the noun listed, you see three words listed, like this. Sometimes in a different order, but this is basically what you see. You see the article telling you what gender it is, because masculine and feminine are the same, so you don't know. You see the nominative singular, and you see the genitive singular, because you need all three to tell you nominative, the stem that features everywhere else, and the gender. In fact, the genitive singular is the same ending in neuter nouns in the third declension, so you, you definitely, definitely need to know the article and the, therefore the gender in order to learn the nouns. Now, when you're learning these nouns, then, can I, I can't encourage you um, strongly enough, don't just ch march around your neighbourhood or sit in your study or wherever it is chanting Aster, Star, Aster, Star. Please, please, please learn it like this. Hot Aster, Asteros. Hot Aster, Asteros, star. Learn it like that and then you will always get all the information you need in order to work out the gender, the stem and the slightly unusual nominative form. Okay, I think that's probably enough for us to be going on with. We're going to come back to look at some more examples of this in the next few videos and as we do so it will all become crystal clear, I promise you. But keep going at this 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week. And we will, I promise, have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, bye for now.